Hi, I'm Steve Garvey, and you know me as a baseball player, but I have other interests, especially the arts. That's why I founded the Steve Garvey RBI Club, to benefit Combo and his 21 member organizations. The club is set up like a baseball team, with a team manager and team members. It offers free tickets to Padre games, a club pen, and a chance to get together at special RBI events. If you're interested, call Combo at 231-6979 for a free brochure. Join us for fun. There's never been a cereal like this before. There's Raisin in the Middle of Kellogg's Raisin Squares. Raisin in the Middle. Kellogg's Raisin Squares. It's the perfect combination. A wheat sweetened with raisin all wrapped up in a perfect square. It's very unexpected to find it there. Raisin in the Middle. Natural sweet raisin. Raisin in the Middle. Kellogg's Raisin Squares. Raisin in the Middle. You're going to like it there. Kellogg's Raisin Squares. Padres will need a win tomorrow in Detroit to keep their season alive. Every game has been close, so anything could happen in Game 5. The Tigers, though, are one win away from taking the World Series after Alan Trammell did all the damage for a 4-2 Detroit win today. Mike Smith has this report from the Motor City. The Padres came into Tiger Stadium today looking to pull even, but it didn't happen, and there were two very big reasons, Jack Morris and Alan Trammell. The problems that have haunted Eric Shaw all through postseason play grabbed him again today. First inning, Alan Trammell teed off on one and sent it into the left field seats for a 2-0 Detroit lead. Bottom of the second with one down, Terry Kennedy got one of the runs back, a line shot into the upper deck and ride Kennedy's first World Series homer. Kurt Bavacqua followed with a bouncer past Darrell Evans at third. Kurt went into second standing up, but he died there. Carmelo Martinez took a call, third strike. And Gary Templeton grounded out to Lou Whitaker to end the inning. In the third, Trammell jumped Oliver Shaw again. With Whitaker on, Allen took Eric into the upper deck. 4-1 Tigers. We knew that if, you know, in the recent games that uh, you want to get the guy early. A lot of times, if you let him go a few innings, they start settling down. You've seen a lot of pitchers in previous years that if you don't get them early, then they settle down and pitch a good ball game. And, uh, you know, I know Eric's been up a little bit. And he got the two balls that I hit out were both balls that were up in the strike zone. In the fifth with Whitaker on again, Trammell got his third hit of the day, a soft single to left. Whitaker went on to third. Then some outstanding relief pitching by the Padres. With one down, Lance Perry hit a broken bat looper to third. Nettles came to the play, and Kennedy put the tag on Whitaker. Dave Drovecki then got out of the inning when he got Darrell Evans on strikes. The Padres picked up the final run on the ninth. Garvey's double off the left field wall got it started. He moved on to third on a ground out, then came in on a wild pitch. The final 4-2 Detroit. Another great effort by starter Jack Morris, and he said that early lead really helped him out. Aztecs played to a 24-all tie with Utah in front of 33,500 at the stadium tonight, so they're now 2-3-1 on the season and 2-1-1 and in WAC play. First quarter, it's tied 3-all when Utah's Earl Tucker takes an Aztec punt and finds the roadway for a 49-yard punt return down to the Aztec 22. And that sets up this play. Mark Stevens passes 23 yards to a wide-open James Hardy, and the Utes lead 10-3. It's 13-3 when the Utes are ready to score again. Stevens puts it up, and watch this. Torrey Nixon makes the steal and runs the interception down the far sideline, 83 yards for a touchdown with just over a minute left in the half, 13-10 Utah at halftime. Fourth quarter, Utah leads 16 to 10. Then the fireworks begin. Todd Santos takes over from Jim Plum and gives it to Dan Gaston for a nine-yard TD at 17-16. Then they mount another drive. Santos looks and finds Webster Slaughter for a 35-yard gain. Santos caps off the drive, passing eight yards to Vince Warren. The Aztecs lead 24-16 with 340 left. But Utah comes back in a hurry. Stevens finds Danny Huey. For a 49-yard TD, Huey had 199 yards with 10 catches on the night. It's 24-22. The Utes go for the two-pointer. Stevens to Thurman Beard. It's 24-all. Utah with a chance to win with 12 seconds left on the Aztec 26. J.J. Johnson sacks Stevens. The clock runs out. The final is 24-all. Running And just 12 days ago, the first playoff game for the Padres in Chicago seems a lot longer than that. And now a winter to think about all that went right and what went wrong. The glorious thrill of three straight over the Cubs, Bavakwa's home run, and why Padres starting pitchers couldn't last much longer than the star-spangled banner. It has been 12 grueling and emotion-packed days for us all, especially Ted Leitner and Hal Clement, who join us live from wet Detroit in the safety of a studio, having spent the day at a very bruised Tiger Stadium. 
Well, amen, John. The, uh, uh, if, if nothing else was done, Sparky Anderson was proved wrong. I mean, Sparky has been saying all week long, seven games. He said, I guarantee you, seven games, going back to San Diego. And Dick Williams kept saying, I know we're going back to San Diego. I just hope the Tigers come back with us. No. Five games, four to one. Padres starting pitching let down, so it came down to the final out with nobody on, two outs. Tony Gwynn, who really did have not only a great season, but a great playoff and World Series. Uh, fly ball to left field. Larry Herndon makes the catch, and the World Series is over. All the announcements about, please, please stay off the field, uh, fell on about 51,000 deaf ears as they about half of them went on the field, tore it up, went bananas. The Tigers got to the safety of their locker room for all the champagne pouring and all the things that the Padres had done after they had clinched the National League championships. Today, it came to the Tigers to pour the champagne and be happy. It was season as you know is officially over now but the celebration in San Diego has just begun early this morning 10,000 anxious and cheering fans greeted the Padres at the stadium fans say they don't care that the Padres didn't stomp on Detroit they're the winners of the National League title and they're still number one in our eyes most of the team stuck around after the buses dropped them off to shake a few hands. I just love them. They're just the best in the world, really. Uh, I think they showed America that they're not a laid-back crowd, that they really care about their community and their team, and we love them. Well, it's wonderful. You know, these fans, uh, they really supported us, and uh, when the chips were down, they were behind us all the way, and, uh, you know, they really turned out to be great fans. Uh, the people that think that San Diego's real laid-back and they don't have fans, well, they really don't know. They should be here right now to see. And for Padre manager Dick Williams, a rose and plenty of warm-hearted thank yous for the year that the Padres came out on top. A couple great drives to pull out the win in overtime. The final was 34-28. That dropped the Dolphins to 11-1. But early in the game, it looked like the Dolphins were going to have a walk in the park. This was their first drive. Mark Zuper, 32-yard gain down to the two-yard line. But the very next play, Willie Bennett is tackled by Lyndon King. He fumbles into the end zone. Ken Green recovers the ball. Big play number one for the defense. In the very next drive, Dolphins, again, moving the ball well, but Dan Marino's pass is picked off by John Turner, another big play for the defense. Dan Fouts had a terrific day. He set new club records for attempts and completions. He was 37 of 56 for 380 yards. Bobby Duckworth grabbed that one for a 44-yard gain. Then Fouts started to chip away at the Dolphins, something that worked real well all afternoon. Pete Hollihan gets 12 yards in the first down on that play. Three plays later, Fouts goes to Eric Severs for the touchdown. Severs had his best day ever, 12 catches, 119 yards. The Dolphins came right back, though, moving the ball 78 yards on nine plays. Marino had all day to find a receiver on that flea flicker play. That picked up 23 yards. From there, Marino went to Mark Clayton for the score. Marino fires it in. What a quick release, too. That tied it at 7-7. On their next drive, the Dolphins scored again. This time, Marino gets some yardage to his tight end, Bruce Hardy. 18-yard gain down to the 13-yard line. That led to a touchdown for former Charger Pete Johnson. They call him Six Point Pete. That's why they made it 14 to seven. And the Chargers put together another long drive. The big play was this pass to Severs, 18 yard gain down to the five yard line. From there, Fouts went to Charlie Joyner. He had four catches today, and that moves him just five away from breaking the all time receiving record. But before the half, Reno struck again. Four yard touchdown pass to Bennett. That gave Miami a 21 14 halftime lead. It was 28 14 in the fourth quarter when Fouts brought the Chargers back. Another touchdown for Joyner made it 28-21. Then the Chargers put together a 19-play drive as they worked their way downfield. That was the longest gainer of the drive. Ernest Jackson to midfield. Later, Pete Holohan makes a terrific catch for another first down. Then with under a minute to play, Fouts, under lots of pressure, gets it to Severs for the tying score. That drive took up 10 minutes on the clock. In overtime, the Chargers move right downfield for the winning touchdown. Buford McGee behind great blocking by Doug Wilkerson, Dennis McKnight. Then he gets a good block downfield by uh, Charlie Joyner. Gets in for the winning touchdown, 25 yards on the play. Chargers win it 34-28. McGee gets the hero's welcome. Some of the best hits of the day right there. 